Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're carrying on with another Sure Cuts A Lot tutorial. There's a few of these coming in the next week or so. I absolutely love this program. For those of you that don't know, it's a third party program in which you can create different effects and you can do a few different things like turn uh, PNGs into SVGs, for example, and then you bring them into design space so that you can then cut them and, and all of that. This for me is definitely worth every penny. I've used a lot of third party programs in the past and this is by far the easiest, or at least for me, I find this is so user friendly. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, make sure you click the notification bell and also if you've got any comments or questions, then please do leave them below. So today we're going to look at how you can curve text and specifically how you can curve cursive text. Now Design Space for Desktop does have a curve tool. However, when it comes to cursive fonts, because Design Space does not naturally curve, so it doesn't naturally space your fonts, we have to move cursive fonts so that they are then obviously cursive and overlapping and beautifully flowing. That can mean that working with cursive fonts and curving them can be a little bit tedious at times. Well, Shakurt's a lot makes that super easy. And there's actually four ways in which you can curve text in Shakurt's a lot. What I will say is that each method will work differently depending on the font that you're using and also the words that you're using as well because they do make a difference. If you're doing just one or two words, that curve is very different to how it will be if you're curving a whole sentence. I'm gonna show you all four ways and it's definitely worth playing with all four of them to see which one works best for you depending on, as I say, what you're writing and the font you're using. So the first thing we're going to do is actually come to our type tool. And if you hold down your type tool, so just click it and hold that keypad down, you'll see it comes up with four options. So we've got type tool, which is the one that we use just to type. There's vertical type tool, kind of says on the tin what it is. Type on path tool, and type on arch. And we're gonna be using both of these today. So the first one we're going to look at is type on arch. And I'm just going to let go of my mouse and it will then select type on arch for me. So just like when I'm working with any text in Shakuts a lot, I can select anywhere on the mat and I can then type whatever it is I want to type. And you'll see, as we start typing, our text is starting to curve. I can get my selection tool and bring it more centrally onto my mat. And now I can make all the changes that I want to make. So the first thing is the font. I can go through and I can select all of my fonts. So this one is Artilla Script. And you'll see that is a lovely cursive font and yet it curves beautifully. Let's choose another one. Let's go for Baby Love. Again, exactly the same. I would possibly play with that a little bit and I'll show you that in a second but I just want to show you the basics first. Let's try this one. Oh that's a nice one. Bankiel. I like that. I have so many fonts I forget which ones I have. So you can change the way that this curve looks by using your font menu. So first of all let's play with the size. So if we play with the size, we are going to change the way in which that curve looks. And we can go either way. We could go for just a nice little arch or we could go for a full circle. We can play with the tracking as well. So the tracking is the space between your letters. So we could make them really bunched up 
or we could bring them out a bit but make sure that they're still obviously all touching. We can play with the offset. So we can decide how wide or how thin we want our curve to be. We can also rotate it. So if we want our curve to start at a certain point, especially if you're doing a circle, then you can obviously play with that. So there's lots of options there as to how you want this to look and you can you can play with it all day long. As I say, the font and the words that you're using are going to make a difference to how it looks. Now I don't need to do an awful lot to this. However, for me that L is a little bit just a little bit too far out. I personally, it's just a personal preference. If I've got a letter like this, I tend to have it going under the other letters. Again, it's just a personal preference for me. So I'm going to come up to Object and Ungroup. And when you do that, your letters become individual. Now, there's three ways that you can move your letters. You can manually just move them. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard or, and this was suggested by one of our group members uh, and someone that watches the videos, Paula, who uses Scout, and she said, if you come up to this arrow here, it will open up your position and size menu. And you'll see here, we've got these little nudge arrows. You can nudge your letters, and they're only moving at a fraction. So absolutely brilliant if you've got any letters that need to be moved so that they're overlapping. So for example, if we move this one, if we bring the arrow key, we can sometimes go too far or not far enough. And equally, if we're moving, we can end up moving the position of our letters. Although I do like this because Scow actually does have a line there that will come up to show you the positioning. But you can also use those nudge keys so that you're positioning it absolutely perfectly. So that is a brilliant tip and is well worth us all knowing. Once you're happy, you can then select everything and you can come to path and union. You do not want to ungroup though until you've got your curve exactly how you want it because once you then do union thing that we'll be able to do is change the size we won't be able to change the tracking as you can see nothing is happening the tracking is moving but nothing is happening so do not ungroup until you're happy with your arch and you may not even need to ungroup the other thing to remember is we could export. Now, if we've ungrouped, we're obviously going to then go path union. If we've not ungrouped, we can just export it as it is. If you bring it into design space and you haven't unioned, they will simply be grouped together. You will need to either attach or weld, especially weld if it's a cursive font in design space. If you select union whilst you're in sure cuts a lot, it will come into Design Space already welded for you. Next, we're going to look at Type on Path tool. So Type on Path is where you actually get a shape and you type your word or your letters in the shape of that shape. The one thing I will say is this, it, it can work really well. Uh, especially if you're doing something like a circle. If you're doing something like a heart or a star, it does take a little bit of tweaking and practicing. And I will show it with other shapes in another video. And there's another method that we're going to look at today, which you can also do with other shapes. And again, I will show that in more detail in another video because they can take a lot of tweaking. For now, we're just going to look at the curving. So I've chosen type on path and I need to get a shape 
in order to follow the path. So if I open up my library and we open up shapes, there's quite a few in here and of course you can import them as well. Let's just go for a nice simple circle. I'm going to select my circle and choose my selection tool and then hold my shift key down so that that keeps its proportions. I'm going to come over to my type tool and select type on path. And then I'm going to select the line of my shape. And then I can start writing. So let's do love makes the world go round and round and round. So you'll see there that I've made them overlap. So I'm going to close that down. I'm going to select my selection tool and make sure that's selected. I can then change this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the font that I'm working with at the moment and I'm going to reduce the size down and you'll see as soon as we start playing with the size that then changes the way that that looks. Again, we can play with the tracking. So if we feel our letters are too close or too far apart, we can play with the tracking on that. Again, we can play with the offset. So we can decide if we want our text to sit on our circle or in the middle of our circle or even inside. So you can play with this until your heart's content. You can also rotate it. So if we want to rotate it, we can. And of course, we can change the font, which is going to change the way that this looks. Now you'll notice at the moment, we've got an outline of our word, we haven't actually got solid text. I'm just going to change the offset on that. So that kind of sits there. And I'm going to come to my color palette. And you'll see we've got fill and stroke. So stroke is the outline of your words. And fill is to actually create that color. So I'm going to select a black. And that's then going to give me a solid colored text so that I can see a bit better what's going on. And then of course, I can come in, I can change the fonts, I can, you know, this is great if you're not sure what font you want to work with, type your phrase or your words, whatever it is you want to type, and then you can come in and just play with the fonts until you find the one that you really want to work with. So for example, this is better love. Let me just rotate that. And then of course, I can play with the way that that looks. Once you're happy with that, we're then going to come up to text, which is along the top line here. And you'll see, and you'll see it says convert text to outlines. If we select that, it will remove that shape for us. We can then either export this as it is, or if we want to bring it into design space already welded for us, we can come up to path and then union to the last in that you can create your text in the shape of a shape. And again, you can do this with various different shapes. We're just going to do a circle today for curving because just like with type on path, this way, especially if you're doing a shape such as, you know, a heart or a diamond or a star, depending on, again, the text and the font, it can take a little bit of tweaking. So I'm just going to show a curve today, but I will do a more in depth video on actually creating words in shapes. So we're going to change our type tool just back to the normal type tool. So I've written my text and I'm just going to choose the font that I want to work with. 
and it is easier if you choose your font now because if you keep changing your font you're going to have to keep doing this process um, over and over so choose the font that you want to work with now don't worry about the size and everything but you do want to check your tracking so if it's a cursive font you want to make sure that it looks how you want it to look I've chosen Ginger Gin as one of my fonts today and I'm perfectly happy with how it looks so all I'm going to do is open up my library and I'm going to choose a shape. Again, this one is a little bit hit and miss. So we're just going to do a curve. I'm going to use the oval uh, circle. But again, I will show you in another video how you can work with other shapes. I'm going to hold my shift key down just to make that a bit bigger and also keep it in proportion. And just to show you, you can actually move this. So at the top of your layers panel is like a little box with an arrow. If you click that, you can move this so that you can see it a bit better. Now, if we look at our layers panel, and this is super important, you'll see that we've got our shape and then we've got our text. Even though our text is above our shape on the canvas, our shape, is above our text in our layers panel. We need to turn that around. If you're going to do this, your text must be above your shape. So all I'm gonna do is select the layer and hold my mouse down and move it so that it becomes on top of my layer. The other way that you can do that is if I just put that back, is select your text Come up to Object, Arrange, and Bring to Front. And that will also make sure that your text is at the top of your layers panel and your shape is below it. That's really, really important. It will not do it if you've got it the other way around. Then we need to select both of these. There's two ways you can do that. You can either draw around them or you can come to your layers panel select your first layer, hold your shift key down, and then select your second layer. We're then going to come up to effects, and we are going to select object on path. It'll come up with this little box, which we can move around. And the first thing you want to select is auto preview. And this will then show you how this is going to look. So I'm gonna play with the offset first of all. So I can choose using the offset where I want this to actually sit in terms of the curve. I can also choose the alignment. So I can have top, so the top of my letters are inside of my shape, middle, or bottom, so that the bottom of my letters are on the outside of my shape. And again, I can play with the offset there as well. So if I want that to be a greater curve, I can. And if I want it to be a tighter curve, I can. Once I've played with it and I'm happy and I can use all of these steps here so I could do reverse path order if I wanted to but of course then we are going to have to play with it just a little bit and once I'm then happy with the way that it looks I can select remove path and if I remove path, it will take away that shape. And I can also choose to weld it there and then if I want to. So I can then select OK. And I've then got that curve. This one is very much dependent on the font that you're working with 
the shape that you're working with and also the text that you're working with as to how successful it will be. It takes a little bit of tweaking. I prefer the other two methods and the method I'm going to show you in a moment for curving. This method is great for working with other shapes, but if you want to do uh, a different kind of curve shape, you can do it that way as well. So for my fourth option, again, I'm going to get my text and I'm just going to select the normal type tool. I'm going to select anywhere on the mat. I'm going to start writing my text. And again, I can play with the font. So I'm going to go for a cursive font this time. So this is girl love. And again, I can play with the tracking. So I want to make sure that those letters are all flowing and how I want them to be. I'm then going to come up to effects and I'm going to select wrapper, which is right at the bottom here. Now, when I open that up, you'll see it comes up with the cone wrapper box. And again, I can then play with this. So you'll see each drop down menu has a top diameter, a top radius and a top circumference. And then the next one is bottom diameter, bottom radius, bottom circumference. And then we've got the slant height and the vertical height and we've got the offset as well. Lots and lots of options to play with here. And depending on whether you choose diameter, radius or circumference, that will change the way that this looks. So we can go round like so. When it meets up in the middle, that's as far as it can go round. But we can also go the other way as well. And we can choose just how much of a curve we want that to be on. And again, the font and the words that we're using for this are going to make a big difference. If you decide that you don't like the font or you decide actually that's not as much text as I would want for this, you can cancel and you can then come back in and change this. So let's do round and round the garden and I'm going to change the font on this one. So let's find, let's do another cursive one. So my butterfly. And then again, we can come up to effects. We want to make sure the tracking is how we want it to be. And that that's all nice and cursive and beautiful. And we can then come up to effects and wrapper. And again, the cone wrapper box will come up and we can of course then play with this. And you can play with the diameter. So you could do diameter, you could do radius. Or you could do circumference. You can also play with that second one. And you can play with the slant as well. So you can decide how great or how skinny you want that curve to be. And you can also play with the vertical height. So you'll see that our cone is completely changing. So depending on what setting you've got selected will depend on how your curve looks. You can also play with the offset. So for example, I can go round one way or I could go round the other way. I can play with the Y offset, which will show me how I can make it greater a curve. Or I can really go in nice and tight to that cone. I can do the X scale, which again, We'll bring that round. Or I can do the Y scale. And again, that will change the way that that looks.
And of course, if I want to go the other way, then I absolutely can. Once I'm happy with it, I can select OK. To get rid of that cone. So if I select my item, I can come up to Object, and we're going to select Ungroup. I can then select the cone and simply delete it. And I'm then left with just my text. And of course, I can either bring that in as it is, you'll see that we've got all of those individual layers there. But if I bring it in, I obviously will need to weld it in this circumstance. If I was using a different font, I may only need to attach, but because it's cursive, I would need to weld. But I am going to come up to Path and Union so that I weld it in shortcuts a lot. I can then go to file and export and of course anything that we want to export does need to be on this mat. It will want to save it as an SVG so I can just give it a name so let's do round curve and save. It'll come up with the export options. I just need to make sure that design space compatible is ticked and it should be automatically, but if it's not, make sure you add that tick and then okay. I can then come into design space and go to upload, upload image, browse. I can select the SVG and open, give it a name and a tag and save. Select it and insert image. Now, because I did union whilst we were in shortcuts a lot, this is going to come in already welded for me. So if I want to change it, I'm going to have to either use my contour tool or I'm going to have to slice it. So you want to make sure if you are going to union in shortcuts a lot, it's how you want it to be. I can, of course, change the size and I could also unlock that and change the way it looks as well. And then once I'm happy with it, I can go to make it and I can then cut it. I could also draw if I wanted to. I could engrave. I could deboss. And of course, I could use the foil system as well. Hopefully, that has helped. There's four ways there in which you can curve, specifically cursive text, because the curve tool in Design Space is great for standard text. Like, I wouldn't do that in Shakuts a lot. I would do that in Design Space, unless I wanted to obviously amend it to a shape. But for just a curve, I would do normal text in Design Space and depending on the cursive font that I was using, I would probably use Shakuts a lot and then bring it in because it is a lot easier with cursive text in Shakuts a lot than it can be in Design Space. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Hopefully this has helped and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!